for the day. Welcome to this one hour long webinar on design thinking as a core competence. This webinar and this whole series is being brought to you by the Academy of Applied Emotional Intelligence. The tagline to the Academy of Applied Emotional Intelligence is compassionate leadership um, always and everywhere. An overt focus on compassion in all aspects of our lives, and you will also see it in, in the theme of today, which is design thinking. The Academy uh, was born out of our experience in the Indian environment with the theme of emotional intelligence with over 48,000 executives across government, private, public sector, and um, as well as multinational corporations. It gave us an idea of what really is one of the capabilities required at uh, all levels in, in this country. If the country is to move to the next level of sophistication, it has to develop what I call its soft infrastructure. And one of the core capabilities of that soft infrastructure will comprise uh, emotional intelligence. The Academy of Emotional Intelligence aspires to train 10,000 master teachers in the domain so that they can be pervasive at all levels in all domains are learning and developing in the domain of emotional intelligence. We have our own model and our own framework born out of the research for almost 15 years now. And the academy is finally anchored in the Indian ethos, wisdom traditions, mindfulness, differentiated productivity, compassion, and the active pursuit of happiness. We aspire to train 10,000 master teachers because I think that is the way to take the country's emotional intelligence to the next level of sophistication. Keeping with the same theme and the same sensibility, today we have Professor Hariharan uh, as the key speaker. Professor Hariharan, first of all, is a very admired friend, a very admired colleague, fellow colleague. Uh, his sessions are powerful, involving, involved, touching, motivating inspiring. Professor Hariharan brings a remarkable level of intimacy uh, with the subject as well as the people he's engaging with and you will get a taste of that uh, in the hour today. He has more than three decades of experience um, across, uh, across industries, across continents. He teaches extensively in India, Middle East, Far East and uh, is, is a very sophisticated communicator. He is masterful in a variety of domains ranging from Indian philosophy and mythology uh, to strategic cost management, new product development, lean thinking, business excellence, and very critically aligning people to the larger objectives, vision, mission of the organization. He's the director of a company called Savia Fair and um, is, uh, is someone that I truly admire. I'm so glad that he has agreed to take the session today. He has, in a sense, subtitled this one hour program as Awaken as the Designer Within. As though there is a giant sitting inside and that needs to be awakened, like Anthony Robbins said, Awaken the Giant Within. Here is an offer to awaken the designer within. Professor Hariharan, I hand this over to you. Only two points to be noted that we will go on for 45 or 50 minutes, but not be fundamentalist about it. We could go a little longer if required. And then in the end, I will take question answers and field it to you. Everybody that needs to answer some questions, your questions can be in the, uh, posted in the question answer box. That's the one I will see directly and uh, we will field those at the end of the session. And if you have comments, you can put those observations, comments, any other thing that you want to say, you can put that in a chat. I have a team of people who are looking at the chat box and if there is something important and critical, we'll bring it up in live time. So thank you very much once again for joining us. And I hand over this to Professor Hari Haran. Okay, so you could see the screen? Yes. Okay, so. I've set myself a timing for about uh, 50 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes. I set the timer on so that uh, I will definitely finish it by 50 minutes. This is the critical part. Okay, so this uh, topic actually design thinking. 
when I was thinking about uh, when Mr. Rajesh asked me what kind of topic we can discuss, I thought, okay, a lot of things are happening around. I'm not talking about the negatives here, I'm talking about the positives around. People are able to adapt themselves very well. People are able to react very well. Sometimes people are very proactive as well. Suddenly start discovering there are a lot of people who are able to come out with solutions for seemingly difficult problems. And everybody is what you call uh, rolling up their sleeves and looking up and then they are able to come out with ideas. And I've been advocating design uh, as a critical domain for almost 14 years. I've done multiple product developments and also solution developments. And I find that there are a lot of people have that innate skill to think in a solution mode. If you look at carefully, COVID-19 has made us think about solution mode. No more mates, no more cooks, no more going out. Suddenly your lifestyle, lifestyle has changed and you're adapting our lifestyle so well to this. And everywhere we are trying to, uh, first two days, couple of days and we are cleaning our house, we have found it a little bit uh, difficult. Then we started methods of doing it simpler. We started changing uh, the roles, cooking for some time I was doing. So my people have to suffer that. And you have a lot of what you call changes happening and we are able to adapt it so well. I'm not talking about when I say we, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about in general, many of us. You see a lot of the communication we have with people, including something like people adapting to webinars so easily. So all these things essentially comes from a fundamental mindset of, let me develop a solution for what I'm having currently as a challenge. So there's a critical theme I'm taking. Most of us have this design thinking as a competence. Is it a core or not? We have to discover. Okay. <clears throat> so what is it we are planning to do broadly is something like this. A quick uh, primer on what this design thinking is. You have to close the window, please. Just a minute. Sorry. So what is this design thinking? Where do you use it? And how do we use it? What are the skills required for it? We will see uh, cases which are not old cases. I'll be quoting from cases which are last one or two weeks cases. Right? Okay. So what is this design thinking all about? From where this has come? Let's have, I, I always admire this uh, Japanese for many reasons. In fact, you know, maybe one of my guru is a Japanese, Professor Shoji Shiba. And uh, there is something very, very unique about the way they go about things and the way they come up, they come up with practices, the way they are addressing a problem. We learned a lot from them, practically speaking. In fact, many of you working in organization are very popular. Uh, 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 we, you know, a lot of concepts are essentially Japanese concepts. And of course, we all worship Toyota. PDCA cycle. In fact, if you look at PDCA cycle, as a, it's the a genesis for many of the thinking process in the world. Plan, do, check, act cycle is the basis for a budget. When you're, when you're preparing a budget, it is nothing but a PDCA cycle. When you're doing a variability analysis using Six Sigma, we use DMA as a framework. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Again, it is a PDCA cycle. When you do theory of constraints and say, I'm going to identify the root cause of a problem, I'm going to identify what is a constraint. Again, the five focusing step is nothing but PDCA cycle. Now, I'm not getting romantic about PDCA cycle, but the fact remains, most of the problem solving follows PDCA cycle. In fact, one of the biggest proponents of design thinking, Tim Brown of IDEO, he himself acknowledged in his book that PDCA is the origin for design thinking. Again, lean production or lean thinking, you can look at, it's a very critical domain of knowledge which we got from Japanese. The whole quality movement, we TQM, Kaizen, and all this quality movement we talk about these days, zero defects, zero effect, the power of zero, everything has come from these guys. 
monozukuri which is actually coming up is going to be the next big thing which people are going to talk about uh, from japan which is primarily the basic manufacturing how do you look at it ikigai people have started talking about it i'm pretty happy about it because this is one concept which is very very powerful and a lot more like this have happened and design thinking has its base in pdca so those who are familiar with pdca we will very easily get a clarity about design thinking is actually pdca but is it then old wine in a new bottle no that be the case everything is a old wine only dma ac is a old wine budgetary control is a old wine everything is a old wine but everything has got a very specific kind of a theme for example when i do six sigma dma ac the theme there is measure when i do something like uh, uh, what do you call let me stop When you when you do something like uh, uh, the theory of constraints, the theme there is primarily, if you look at it, is primarily the constraint. If you look at budgetary control, the PDCA, there the central theme is primarily how do you plan your outlay of expenses. So everywhere the central theme will be slightly different, but the way we approach the particular situation solution is primarily PDCA cycle. Similarly, in design thinking. Though PDCA is the base for design thinking, the central theme is something else. We'll see that as we go further. So this gentleman is Tim Brown. Typically, design thinking is thinking like a designer. What is so special about thinking like a designer? We'll see that a designer can transform the way you develop products, services, and processes, and even strategy. So if you look at it carefully, design is the base for anything. I'm not telling this because the program is design thinking. More than 90% of what you are going to do is committed by the by the time you design a product or a solution. You take the case of a product. More than 90% life cycle cost is committed by the time the design is complete. You take about a process. More than 90% of your life cycle cost of the process is committed by the time the design is complete. For that matter, any decision you take, you commit something. Decision design is a commitment. You commit something. That's what a design is all about. So therefore. when you look at everywhere everything you see around you will find this perspective of design so what is the design thinking a slightly formal definition innovation is powered by thorough understanding first and foremost there has to be an innovation innovation primarily for solving a problem profitably so through understanding of what by observing of what people want and need in their lives a direct observation see it is extremely difficult to come with a solution if you don't observe in fact in japanese it is called as genchi gembutsu they call it as a gemba gemba is primarily gem space ba fact the space where there is a fact is gemba gemba is not necessarily manufacturing place gemba is a place where you are going to find the fact so when you when you go and observe what is happening then you come with solution so a direct observation of what people want and need in their lives what do what they like or dislike about the way a particular product is made for example suppose you realize that this particular product is made in a condition which is not acceptable ethically you may feel guilty of buying that product also for example many companies have started talking about a concept called responsible sourcing these days responsible sourcing typically means i am responsible for my supplier i am responsible for the well being of my supplier's resources as well so when companies are placing orders they are also talking about how well you are taking care of your employees how well you are taking care of your society how much of contribution you have made in that context so way particular products are made are using child labor so the are made packaged how a product is packaged makes a big difference A simple classic example is primarily your um, Maricos uh, coconut oil cap. So that particular packaging is extremely important to ensure that I can't reuse that pack because one of the problem in coconut oil is if you reuse the particular container, it will start contaminating the coconut oil. So they ensured that you are not allowed to contaminate it by reusing it. The way it is packaged, the way it is marketed, how it is communicated about the product. that is going to be a critical solution for 
a customer how it is sold in which channel it is being sold we are comfortable buying certain things only by touching and feeling we are comfortable buying certain things by net also so how is it being sold and how is it being supported put it very simply in short rather understand what people do let us take a very simple example this is a water bottle all of us know this so what do i do with the water bottle i drink water what's a big deal wait what is my engagement with this water bottle my engagement with this water bottle is many first of all i have to open the bottle right i'm opening it easy to open at the same time ensure it is not very loose it should be easy to fill the water it should be easy to close this after closing it should not leak then whenever i want i want to open. i want to lug around the bottle like this whenever i want to open i will open and i will drink it should be easy to drink as well then close it but look at carefully there are certain bottles which has very very narrow mouth that bottle is easy to drink but difficult to fill there are certain bottles which are broader which are easy to fill difficult to drink so people came with a bottle where they have easy to drink with a smaller nozzle here and easy to fill with a bigger opening here this comes essentially by empathizing with the user when you understand what the user does you can come with the solution so design thinking is a solution based how do you create solutions how do you make the life of people comfortable that's what is all about it is a discipline that uses designer sensibility and method sensibility he should be sensible and sensitive to the user requirement he should be comfortable about what he is seeing meaning sympathy is different from empathy rajeshwar once told that uh, that elaborately he talks about that as uh, ultimately empathy is not simply feeling sad about it empathy should have three a's you should be aware of what that challenge that person is facing you should articulate what that challenge and you should take action on that challenge aware articulate and act are the three specific things are required for design thinking a designer sensibility and the methods he follows he follows for giving a solution to match the people's need ultimately i should create something which my customer is willing to pay for like for example quite some years back in i think in 1994 95 polar fans came with a phenomenal fan they said the fan for kids what is unique about this fan the fan had lot of what you call cartoon characters on the on the wings with lot of fanfare they launched the fan but the poor guys didn't realize that the basic purpose of the fan is to rotate when the fan rotated the figures blurred along with the marketing strategy so none of the cartoon characters are visible on the fan they are all standing below oh there goes my strategy so if you have to sell this product to my customer i should tell my customer customer buy this fan but don't switch on keep the fan in ac room lie down and then look up you can see the cartoon characters absolutely useless product when it comes to that so when it doesn't match the people's needs there are so many classic examples like this let me take another example take this pen this is a marker pen a marker pen is never going to be kept by anybody in a pocket like this so then why do i have this cap i am having this cap is actually useless product useless component for this pen it serves only one purpose that is to ensure that this particular pen does not roll off if i keep it on the surface it should not roll on that's the only purpose it serves i can as well use some small protrusion here this is a component which does not meet people's need so the point here is that you take any product you will find this challenge you take another product i'm just randomly picking a product you have this mask pretty popular these days correct in you wear it how long you are going to wear it like this it's going to start paining here your ear is going to be hurt absolutely useless so does a product meet the people's need is very very critical with what is technologically feasible it should be possible for me to do it first of all and what is a viable business strategy which should be profitable as well to convert customer value and a market opportunity so 
coming with a romantic idea is not enough an idea which is implementable and an idea which is also profitable is critical for design thinking so definitely it entails a great deal of perspiration like thomas alva edison always says one person is a inspiration 99 person perspiration this slide is very interesting i want you to notice the bottom part of the slide from where i have taken this slide have a look at it something very interesting design thinking the guide book royal civil service commission bhutan what bhutan got to do with design thinking that to royal civil service of bhutan as you may be aware bhutan is one of the countries which talks about gross happiness index they are considered to be one of the happiest countries in the world and they use design thinking extensively very very simple the first thing about design thinking is it should be human centric how do i make the life comfortable how do i make the life comfortable number 2 it has to be collaborative team of teamwork it cannot be done by a designer sitting in his ivory tower design is too dangerous to be left to designers learning by doing karke dikha is extremely important you have to try it out make it and then work it you look at it this is applicable in any kind of a thing you are trying it out once you try it out by hand it becomes easier for you to do it you should embrace experimentation experimentation's fundamental principle is you should not be afraid to fail are we having the guts to fail is very crucial easier said than done by qualification i am a chartered accountant my consulting area is design operations and cost management have a mood away no i have moved towards so the thing biggest thrill so one has to get at whatever be the age or experience is what is that new thing i learned today is an extremely important part of growing up like rahul dravid says 30 matches you have played does not mean i got 30 match experience is a question of how much you learned from each match and how much you lost from each match and what you learned out of that in each match is what your experience is all about so that will come only when you embrace experimentation we should understand patterns relationships and systems for example in the current context everything is confusing but you have to see some kind of a pattern emerging you look at the last 23 days of your lockdown compared to the first 3 or 4 days of your housework what we are doing some of you are working from home we are also working at home these days you have started methods which has created you identify some kind of a pattern and then you created doing things you started doing things in the very particular way that's typically you have to understand the patterns relationships and systems and then you develop it okay and finally you have to visualize and then you have to look at it that's very important for design thinking you should be in a position to visualize what you are communicating so i am taking this framework from tim brown design thinking there are three broad steps in design thinking the first level is explore go and see i have a very good friend of mine called professor moradian some of the participants may be knowing him also moradian always takes about goya those of you who have attended his class or sessions would know what is goya get off your you know what so don't sit on your rear please get off and then go out and observe what is happening which is what he always says that's what genchi gembutsu is all about i have a guru called soji shiba shiba always talks about jump into the fish bowl to understand what the fish is doing at a pixel level so you have to go and see observation is fundamental for design thinking explore comes from observation and empathy as i already quoted the rajeshwar empathy is aware articulate and action the second stage is create create many designs there is no one solution for the problem the problem can be addressed in multiple ways the best way to solve the problem is to dissolve the problem and prototype a solution and then implement the solution faster for example when icici bank started in a late 90s they had a challenge of what you call dispatching uh, checkbooks it used to it used to be a lot of mismatch of checks going to checkbook going to different people so they tried so many things ultimately one idea provide which is primarily instead of they used to what you call print the name of the person on the checkbook name and address on the cover then somebody has to match these two and put it they said it is a very very simple thing common sense thing they made a window envelope 
printed the name and address on the checkbook itself. So the only way to put it inside is that. So there's no way I can send it to wrong person. The point is, but they prototyped it to start with. They tried it out in some places and then they implemented it. And finally, implement. Implementation also many iterations. But details matter, especially details regarding the failure modes. Those who design background will definitely know about this failure mode effect analysis. The failure modes are very, very crucial for us to identify and then address. So these three are essentially called as immersion, ideation, and implementation. These are the three eyes of design thinking. Immersion is what I the word I use. Some people use the word inspiration. Immersion or inspiration, ideation, and implementation. We'll see some examples and then we'll go further. You remember this definitely? I'm sure many of you would have seen the movie many times also. DDLJ, Maratha Mandir. If you remember the olden days of watching a movie, we used to go to a movie, stand in the queue, pick up a ticket. We'll never dare to venture out to the washroom during the break. We know how pathetic it used to be. So the, we went to, went to the movie theater only for watching a movie. Then the movie experience changed. So it became more like a Geva color now. The movie experience changed to PVR or big cinema or whatever be it, Inox. So you go there, you start experiencing the whole ambience. Movie my, watching is one aspect of going to a theater. So typically you don't go to, a, it's not a separate theater, it's normally the fourth floor or the fifth floor of a mall. So you have to do so many things in that and it is an outing, family outing, it turned out to be like this. But still you have to go to the theater, buy the ticket, and hope to get the seat together in case the movie is houseful. Then came bookmyshow.com. When bookmyshow.com, I could sit in my room, fill up the whole thing, identify which seat I'm going to sit, choose what I'm going to eat, whatever is the useless thing, and then I will go to the theater just before the movie starts, go in, show my uh, thing, and then get in. So does it solve all my problem? Or all my needs are met? I am a big Rajinikanth fan. So for Rajinikanth movie, I should see uh, first, uh, first day, first choice, ideally. But these days, it doesn't happen. It's a different experience altogether. So I went to see one movie called Kala. So I booked the ticket in Ragulila Mall in Vashi. That's where I live. Booked the ticket. We went. I took my vehicle to my family, dropped the family at the gate, and then went to the parking space. I went by level by level. No parking available anywhere. Absolutely frustrated. I went back home. My home is about 15 minutes from the theater. I parked my vehicle, took an auto, took an auto and came back to the theater. Normally, in the Gandhi movie, the most important scene is the first scene, his entry scene. And I missed that. And I heard that's the only scene which is good in the movie also. I don't know about that anyway. So ultimately, what happened was, my bookmyshow.com has not fulfilled my need. I'm not able to get my need fulfilled in bookmyshow.com because I ultimately missed Rajinikanth's entry scene. So bookmyshow.com only looks at what is happening in the theater. It doesn't happen to think about what am I doing to reach the theater. Ultimately, what bookmyshow.com has done now is they have also added an option of Uber Connect where you can book an Uber. Uber will come and pick you up and drop you. Uber will pick you up and drop you back. Maybe book my show can go one step further. They can tie up with the parking space also. Only thing is theater owner is different. Parking space is different contractor. But it is possible to connect. So then they can start selling the parking space also. That means if you start looking at understanding what the customer does, the solutions are many. This is what I just figuratively made it here. I went to my family. The fellow came and stopped me. Asked me to go to another level. I went there. One fellow came running and stopped me sent me to another level. I went there. He slowly came and stopped me and asked me to get out. When he started, I was happy. When I moved there, I got a little bit worried because I'm going to miss the first scene. Then slowly, when I started moving further, I got absolutely saddened about it and absolutely I got annoyed also. So my customer experience is not only in the movie. My customer experience starts from the time I leave my home also, meaning Design thinking calls for understanding what the customer does. Okay, now let us come to the specific here now. In the context of today's context of COVID, how does it, how design thinking can actually work? 
let us look at it with some three specific perspectives. One is the problems faced by the health department and its workers. Lot of challenges they face, shortage of gloves, shortage of visors, shortage of body masks, shortage of vertical sanitizers, shortage of what do you call space to even for them to move around the patients. A lot of problems they face. There are problems faced by industries, both by hospital, hospitals and uh, healthcare industry, and also the other core industries as well, because we don't have anything to produce these days. So problems of industries, another big challenge. There are problems faced by us, who are all, all of us are in quarantine now. We are all in home quarantine. We also face problems. So can design thinking work here? Let us see some examples and then see how does it happen. <clears throat> Testing time, cost, accuracy, accessibility at the point of use, training necessary for the testing kit. There are so many factors which actually get you into a testing kit. Testing kit is not a simple testing kit. It's not somebody like is going to take a, a medical thing and then going to give a solution. Definitely not. The time taken for testing and the results to come out is longer. The cost is prohibitive, was prohibitive, now it is better. Is the accuracy there? They come and shoot something on our forehead, which is primarily only temperature, nothing much. Because first set uh, test negative, second test negative, third test positive. Accuracy. Accessibility, where do we get accessibility at the point of use? And the training necessary for testing. There are so many challenges in this particular thing like testing. There is a company called Fast Sense in Pune. You can do a Google search. I have given the reference also for that in the same slide. I given here the reference. This fast sensor developed, developed what is called as a rapid testing kit. Okay, so it does about 50 confirmatory test samples per hour. That means it takes care of the reasonable accuracy. Testing time comes down drastically and it doesn't take much time to take the sample also. And therefore, the training requirement also has come down drastically. The solution what these people are offering, by the way, I am not a marketing agent for them. I'm just communicating an example which is primarily on how people are coming out with the design mindset. So this particular solution, what they're talking about, you can do a Google search and find out yourself. Fast Sense has come with a methodology which is able to reduce the time drastically. So this is a classic case of how am I empathizing with the need? If you look at that first line, it's very important what we have put up. Testing time, cost, accuracy, accessibility at point of use, training necessary for the testing. All these things has to be addressed. It is not a question of only making a testing kit. So a design thinking essentially calls for the different pain points a customer is going to face. The example I gave about move, going to any kind movie. It is not the movie's quality that the theater cannot promise me. But the fact is theater has to ensure me that I'm there on the seat at the time I want that to be on the seat. So it starts from my parking onwards. It starts from my booking the ticket also, correct? So like this, when I'm looking at the problem, I have to look at the problem in the totality of the customer requirement. Okay, I'm moving ahead. Uh, Raj, uh, Rajesh, is there any question? No questions as of now. Okay, fine. Second classic example. This is a kid, 12 year old kid. He's a scout. His name is Quinn Calendar. He lives in Vancouver, Canada. He found the, the hospital uh, people have got a big challenge. You could see that. I hope you can see me on the screen. You wear it here for the whole day. Imagine how much of pain it is going to create on the ear. It will create itching. It will be sweaty. The whole thing will become absolutely painful for somebody. It's a healthcare workers at serious ear pain after long shifts wearing mask nonstop. So this kid came up with a phenomenal solution. Many of you would have got it in WhatsApp or in uh, Facebook or in LinkedIn. This is the solution he pre created, a 3D printed holder. You can see this here. She is wearing it in the back here. I'll show that here with the pointer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, see here, she's wearing a pointer here. You can see the pointer, she's wearing it here. And she is tying it to this, so it, her ear is always saved. It's not going to be hurting. 
simple solution and what this kid has done is phenomenally he has given this particular 3d printing to anybody in the world to use also there's also start circulating in whatsapp and linkedin yesterday so you can take that particular thing and then you can print your own thing like this for doing it and he is making it and sending it again look at the same principle of human centric here absolutely human centric understand the problem what that person is facing it can come only from this kid's observation so many years we have been wearing this uh, what do you call mask but nobody thought about this why nobody thought about it because the problem was not pronounced till now now everybody is wearing it he might have seen his mother wearing it and suffering also and therefore this kid came with the solution to solve this problem so it is not that you have to be technically highly qualified to do this you need to have that mindset that hey, this is a problem i think i should find a solution for this okay shortage of essential components in medical equipment this is another big challenge everybody is facing there is a company called brescia in italy he start 3d printing essential wall parts by reverse engineering but it has created a problem for them ip rates issue has come up they got somebody has slapped up a case also on them now but why i am showing this still is though legally what they have done is wrong in a way ethically this seems to be okay because at this point of time looking at ip rates and all is not going to help so they have come up with a 3d printing process to ensure that the components are available here they have not created something new Let's understand this very clearly. Your solutions need not be absolutely unique. Solutions can be already reinforcing what is already being done, also. Okay. But what they have done is the process. If you go to the net and find out, you will learn more about this. If you are technically inclined to towards this. Okay. It's a different kind of a material they have used for making this. In fact, the three D printing community is doing a lot in this COVID. you can go to there and find out this another classic example is another 12 year old kid from mexico you have to pronounce rightly mexico you can see this video okay fine Just give me a minute Look here, old boy in Mexico is doing his part in an effort to battle the coronavirus by making masks and visors from a 3D printer to give to medical professionals. Jorge Martinez, who lives in Oaxaca, is on lockdown from school, but is definitely putting his quarantine time to good use. He so far made around 100 of the PPEs to supply to personnel on the front lines of the virus. This idea to make visors came about from the need for doctors to cover their faces, as this new virus, coronavirus, spreads through the eyes, nose, and mouth. The 3D printing process takes about 45 minutes for each mask and the visors are easy clean according to Dr. Leva Hernandez. The visors are very useful for us. They're light so they are helpful for use in cases in the hospital. They are being used over many hours. The visors are more practical and easier to use and clean. So far there have been over 300 deaths and more than 4000 coronavirus cases in Mexico. So it's a classic again example of how somebody with a mind to help somebody with the mindset to see whether i can find a solution for this see if you look at the underlying theme is very clear empathy 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 again and again and again i am aware that there is a problem i am able to articulate the problem very well that this virus can enter through any of these four parts eyes nose or ears or mouth so i it has to be protected so he started making visors extremely simple solution and now 3d printing is very easy to make is available at a cheap rate also 35000 i believe the base model this is another interesting example if you look at uh, there are a lot of fashion designers this is not from uh, any medical magazine this is i picked up from vogue magazine i given the reference also vogue is a fashion magazine there are about four or five uh, fashion designers who are actually into fashion designing they were sitting idle at home and they were wondering what is what's happening around they found that a lot of these people had their friends are going to hospitals unprepared look at that word unprepared is very important instead of just sitting at home we had the resources and able to get something done so they started making the same thing what this kid is doing now this is a very simple model 
two components a frame that looks like a headband which is 3d printed and a plastic sheet that pops into the frame it takes an hour to print each shield the specs for which are free and available on the internet now again please don't look at the money part of it right now but the fact remains is these are all solutions which has been done by people in a matter of hours or days it has not gone through a huge process of what you call testing and doing and everything test it on the field itself experimentation embrace experimentation collaborative effort these are all the typical specific requirements of design thinking let's go on further what's happening okay now coming to the point second point is primarily problems of industry so i am dividing the industry problem into two parts industries one industry is primarily the hospital the the the, the healthcare industry itself and the second is the other industries who have got nothing to do now i am sure you are aware of this let me get back the pointer again sorry i'm not able to get that just give me a second you could see this what these people are doing is primarily they are converting the railway compartment into hospital beds so the trains are idling and the trains are being converted into hospital beds this is not meant to be a hospital let please be clear this is actually a quarantine facility this is not a treatment facility let us be clear about it. the go the the railway coach factory is very clear about it. this is not a treatment this is a quarantine isko double karna chahte hain zyada matlab nahi lagta nahi okay this is typically adaptability of sfrt situation and this is a government organization mind it ultimately it looks something like this being repurposed as hospital wards which is extremely important again i given the source can have a look at it this is another classic example this is from mahindra and mahindra this is shared by my good friend suhas gokhale i'm not able to open this uh, video Yes. Here, they converted a sanitary uh, bag making machine to a mask making machine. My colleague Sunil told me, the Pando, that we are in a position to start making clean masks. No? Actually, yes. I just picked one of them. So, can you just tell me what is this and how you have done it so fast? Because I think your company Saral is only in uh, making uh, sanitary sanitary napkins, and I remember. Uh, So how many talking about that in this situation she wants some parts to be made because she is not a supplier. So how it has started? Just just show me what happened. So hi, I am Muhammad Jaz and uh, uh, I am from Sarel Designs and now I am at uh, Mahindra Kandivli uh, location and uh, this is our mass manufacturing machine. So I will uh, take you through the process how it is going work, how it is working. So there are three layers of uh, raw materials which we are using in this mass. The first row is a top top layer. This is a bottom layer. This is a mid, mid, uh, middle layer. And middle layer main purpose also that also uses a filter purpose. So that doesn't allow any germs or uh, which is there outside or to uh, condense. So now all these three layers is accumulating over here. And with the help of this assembly, it is creating that dry for uh, aesthetics. And uh, from there it will go to this ultrasonic uh, unit. Okay. And we can adjust it. Uh, the depth of all these uh, dots which is appearing over here okay so and there's a ultrasonic horn over here which is creating frequency uh, with amplitude and with the help of this pressure and that frequency it is creating ceiling uh, ultrasonic ceiling over here and now we are getting a uh, final product over here like this and i'll show you the demo how it is working This is our final product. This so we can take it like this. So 
This is our mask. And now it needs ear looping, ear loop welding. So which we are keeping the loop over here and here, and we are pressing it. So uh, this shaft will come here and it will do the weld. So and after that it will look like this. And uh, now the final product we will take to this ultraviolet stylizer. Please start that machine. So we will keep it over here. And within 5-6 seconds it will travel from there to here. And it will, you will get final product from here. So 5 minutes or uh, 5 seconds is sufficient for removing all the germs and bacteria from the mask. Which, uh, which is possible over here. So that is our final product and we can do the titanium from our plants by here. I understand there were some so parts the uh, when you were doing it there were three parts to be made yeah. where you approached Sunil, Pando and Justin. Yeah. So, so who was there? Who was there? Who went there? I was there. Yeah, sorry. No, what was your experience? So, uh, this is the part which we have used HR, HCR material with uh, hardened. This material is hardened for 65, uh, 60 to 65 HRC and previously they are used to import it from China. But since uh, yeah. China is closed, so uh, they are, uh, you know, they have asked for our help, and we have used our expertise, Mahindra's expertise, and we have made this part in uh, uh, two days. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Today one new requirement is there for which Vijay Rupati is helping them for automation. Oh, yes. yes. See, see, very simple. I mean, I was just talking about. It. Okay. Now the responsibility and all, all of you. I mean, these, this is not available, and the guys are going without this in hospitals and sanitary. Our guys who come for sanitary and those things. We can't really depend on importing this. We have to find work with work 24 by 7 replicator. I'm not talking about commercial industry. Just do it. Just do it, we'll see it later. So, okay. This part yes, is very really important. important. Just do it, we'll see it later is an extremely important mindset for problem solving. Especially in a situation like this, rapid prototyping, fail fast, fail safe is a key mantra of design thinking. Fail fast, fail safe. They are not worried about the automation part of it. The point is primarily, I have got my machines idling. How do I ma use this machine for making something else which can be useful for the society as well? <clears throat> this is another classic example. Hello. We have developed a made in India, rapidly scalable, low cost, 100% recyclable emergency hospital bed using high strength corrugated board made from performance grade craft paper. The bed is lightweight at approximately 10 kilos and is flat packed for ease of storage, movement, transportation and can be very easily assembled. The bed specification and design has been engineered to carry a load of 200 kgs. We have further applied a special chemical coating to make the beds water resistant and thus the beds can withstand floor mopping and cleaning with a disinfectant. To add to the aesthetic value, we will randomly color the top sheets of the beds in bright and cheerful colors. The video you're watching demonstrates the assembly process, which is under five minutes. The bed has been conceived and designed by our partner, architect Riya Shah, prototyped and developed by Mr. Harish Kesur, and the project has been self-funded by the Aryan Paper Group. Where you can learn more about the company at aryanpaper.com, A-R-Y-A-N-P-A-P-E-R.com. Thank you. Again, this is a classic case of empathy, if you look at it. Number one, what are the key challenges what we have? Uh, we, we hope that number of patients don't increase beyond unmanageable levels. So when it goes to that level, we need definitely hospital beds. And the key points he's talking about here is that this can withstand 200 kgs, fundamental requirement for a bed, definitely, because I'm going to put some bedding on top of it. On top of it, the patient is going to lie. Okay, number two, it is easy to wash it. I can wash it in the ground also because I need disinfectant proof. It's not going to affect this particular product. It's very, very important. Number three, very important. I can assemble it within five minutes. You saw that the way they are assembling it also. The question here is the scalability is so simple, so easy, which is a need for the current situation. Again, if excellent perspective of how to make it customer centric. Now we have a problem at home quarantine. The problem we have is fundamentally a lot of misinformation comes in. So what kind of solutions we can think for misinformation? How do I avoid misinformation? We can think of solutions for this. I'm not preferring any solution. I'm just opening up some questions for you to think through. 
trigger the designer within how do i ensure the misinformation is not getting affected is not uh, actually spreading absence of a work friendly environment at home absolutely suddenly you find i got a bit uh, annoyed because my son was crossing that place okay it it disturbs us am i correct however much we change the background and everything is not going to help there is going to be the work friendly environment is not there how do we manage to handle that lack of exercise and sunlight we don't get sunlight at all these days and we don't have uh, what do you call uh, vitamin d at all the only source for us is sun if you are if you are a vegetarian so there's no scope so how do we do that now we do family uh, what do you call uh, walking in the we do in the evening inside the house sterilization of groceries and supplies how do we sterilize shall we put detol on top of all this fruits and everything or shall we true try uh, hot water shall i try what you call water sprinkled with uh, with the turmeric there are so many imponderables what we have typically there are solutions needed for all these problems is a classic example where somebody has made a, a handle without touching it uh, but it's not in my opinion it's not a great idea because in that portion which is primarily uh, here your uh, hand portion also will be having uh, some kind of contamination so this is not going to solve the problem to a great extent same is the case with the other one the green one also but the other one is pretty useful using the feet to do this and all these solutions are through 3d printing the another not a, not a great solution in saudi arabia but they found out for handling sanitizer they is more like a clip like a bracelet you wear it in the hand without touching this you can use this you don't have to hold the bottle to open it but still you have to use your hand to open it not a great idea but fine somebody has tried it out <coughs> I give the source here for this. Let us take another example. Have a look at this. Developed a mechanical device for operating the MBU bag. MBU bag is currently being used by medical practitioners in case of emergency by operating a mechanical device for operating the MBU bag. MBU bag is currently being used by medical practitioners in case of emergency by operating it manually. As the pressing is manually done, it cannot be sustained for longer duration. and also in the current circumstances distancing from the patient is very much necessary so we have motorized the pressing operation with all the necessary controls let me explain you the key feature of this device let me start this device so the rate of air pumping can be controlled with the help of the speed control switch which we have provided so there's a potentiometer which controls the rpm of the motor you can see as we rotate the knob the speed is getting increased and we can achieve 0 to 30 breaths per minute there is a provision to control the volume of the air being pumped so we have provided two settings on the switch thereby we can achieve two different volume levels volume of air going into the patient there's a pressure relief valve provided as part of the mbu bag kit which releases the pressure if go if it goes above 40 mm of mercury we have provided an emergency stop button on the console so in case of an emergency we can stop the this device there's an additional handle pendant device provided especially for the patient along with a long cable so in case of, and we have provided an emergency stop button on the pendant also and also there's a doctor call button for ease of the patient there is an inbuilt logic in this device so if due to some reason this machine stops then there will be an alarm for the attendant or the doctor to come and attend the patient in that case this mbu bag can be operated manually for making this device we have used all the standard of the shelf parts so as to ensure reliability and durability of this okay, device thank you example extremely simple design non complicated having only minimal controls on this anybody can use it and taking into consideration empathizing with the need of distancing social distancing and the distance from the patient this is again a classic example of looking at how do i look at the with empathy the challenges faced by the medical practitioners and by the patient it has got emergency switch it has got a control with the patient it has got control with the doctor it has got adjustable and variable pressure can be built and it has got consistency in building the pressure simple okay
can we call it as a jugad i will say let us not use the word jugad in a negative connotation because that is one skill we have which can be converted into a formal skill this is my opinion debatable but the point is that uh, let us not dismiss something as a simply as a jugad here because there is somebody who thought about creating a solution okay the product looks like a industrial product not like a hospital product so what it serves the purpose it serves the purpose of emergency now we can always make it more beautiful more uh, what do you call like uh, how to put it aesthetically pleasing and everything so the purpose is not that now fail fast fail safe they are not failed at the base level right is another classic example see this one this you have seen it it came yesterday we you got but yes again it serves the purpose this example is primarily is uh, this hand is my son's hand this happened when he was i think in 9th or 10th standard it happened we were in 7th floor so very often what happens is in the 7th floor parapet wall just outside our window sill whatever we dry the dry, when we are drying the cloth the cloth is to fall down so every time being the angster he has to get down and pick it up got an eye so he made something like this so you can have a look at it this is a rod in the rod end of the rod he has got a uh, what do you call so it's a simple clip so how this whole thing works is something like this the clip is tied to a rope and the other end of the rope is tied to a wooden stick and it goes through this you pull it out and you put the clip in open position inside that then you put it down and then push that clip with that wooden rod it immediately catches this so because he was preparing for his uh, board exam and all we used to ask him get down and take it out this fellow get and uh, no, get some right so ultimately he made it incidentally he is studying design in uh, iit guwahati in fact uh, this presentation is made by him just uh, first time i made somebody else make my presentation normally i make my presentation this whole presentation the theme the sequence is created by him i gave him the what i required he made it and gave it to me my alarm also is off on now another five more minutes two more minutes i will finish up this is the is the mother of invention this is something very interesting idea perspective which i picked up uh, uh, recently what they call as crisis appropriate version of design thinking this if you go to net and search for how might we you will get a lot of material on this how might we you can please have a look at it i given this reference also if you ask this question how might we this particular phrase triggers a few specific questions number 1 is an open ended question so divergent thinking is on the table how might we help here how might we solve this problem how might we make it easier how might we make this testing faster how might we make this in such a way that it it helps me in social distancing how might we make it in such a way that we are not going to contaminate everything around so you start questioning how might we you get multiple mm -hmm. solution there are many potential solutions out there there's no one solution for the problem let us have that clear it's a collaborative multidisciplinary creative effort and not only the specific domain experts so you are a designer come in come in i'll just introduce my uh, the man who created this presentation also you can say hi to them he is vishwa prasanna pursuing design from iit guwahati thank you so you are a designer with a design mindset and we don't even realize it so i am just leaving with a few questions for you few th thing to think about activities that we automatically follow where we follow design thinking methodologies for example we are figuring out the video conference software for our meetings we do prototyping and testing so many things in fact uh, in the zoom meeting 
uh, when we were trying it out, uh, how do I get the noise of the video, voice of the video in the Zoom? Suddenly, suddenly we discovered there is an option there for this. We are integrating our household chores with our exercise regime also, empathizing and ideating. How do we make, try to make it? And we have sent off our maid on a holiday without cutting her salary a week before lockdown. Correct? We have done that. Think about it more. What else you can do? So, the next few minutes, what I have, what I suggest is, I want you to keep typing whatever you think you can go back and attempt in your own place. With that, I am completing my presentation. Rajeshwarji, over to you after this. Thank you so much. I exactly you. finished it on time, 50 minutes. Thank you, Professor Hariharan, for your presentation and the richness you bring in terms of contextualizing and live examples. I'm sure it's a, a fascinating uh, journey, just figuring out uh, examples from everyday life. And some of these uh, videos are a day old or two days old. Thank you for being so contemporary and contextually relevant. We have a few questions here. And Please. I will take them in the, um, okay, here we have, uh, so somebody called Srinivas Golakuti is asking, would you like to comment Comment on TRIZ, T R I Z, Theory okay. of Innovative Problem Solving. <laughs> See, TRIZ theory, I don't exactly remember the Russian expansion theory, Russian way, Isometric, Zetek, something like this. See, TRIZ talks about, it came out of a mind perspective that, uh, okay, let me give a different context, uh, example here and then I'll get into TRIZ. Um, I was once very, very uh, lucky to travel in the flight sitting next to Ilai Raja. Generally, Raja was a very reserved person I heard. On the day, maybe he was in a mood to speak, maybe I don't know. So he made uh, an observation that uh, all the noises have already been made. We only mix and match it. Tris is based on that particular principle. It says that all the design complications have already been addressed. Only thing is, we don't know uh, because we are not able to articulate it. So Tris identifies there are 39 possible parameters for design like length of the moving object, uh, what do you call uh, weight of the moving object, weight of the stationary object, pressure, force, temperature. There are 39 parameters it talks about. These 39 parameters, it contradicts with other, uh, the same 39 parameters. You, then you will have a 39 by 39 matrix. I think you can visualize that. Then for each of this combination, there are four or five solutions he has identified based on millions of patent filings done in Russian patent office. So, Based on that, you can identify four or five solutions for each. There are 40 solutions he developed. That's why it's called TRIS40. You can go to net and search for TRIS40.com. T-R-I-Z, TRIS4040.com. Have a look at that. You will get some better idea. But coming to the point, uh, how is it comparable design thinking? I will say, yes, it is one of the tools which can enable your design, your thinking process better. Where this thinking process complication happens. Let me go a little bit technical. When you do a QFD, quality function deployment, we try to correlate the prior technical requirements based on the designer's mindset. Designer will always have some kind of a contradictions coming up. We call it as a roof of QFD. We apply TRIS on the roof of QFD, where you will get some phenomenal perspective about how to solve a specific problem. So even design thinking tells the same thing. What design thinking says, says is, don't try to create something new. Look around for already existing solutions. Like, for example, you might have seen that movie Three Idiots, where uh, Rancho asked the question to Viru Sahasrabuddhe, why should this fellow spend so much of money on this pen? Can't they use the pencil? Then Viru says that, uh, Viru Sahasrabuddhe says, no, you can't use a pencil because it will start, uh, small particles will start hurting the people. But Russians used pencil and they used TRIS for getting that solution. So it can enable as a good aid for design thing. Good question. Thank you so much. Thank yes, sir. You. So the second question we have from Vignesh. Vignesh is, of course, saying, um, uh, how could this ideology be communicated and executed from top to bottom of the pyramid in a huge MNC set up specially in cases where we may not be able to quantify the benefits in terms of cost? Vignesh, I will answer this question in uh, broadly two categories. First part is fundamentally, there are certain challenges, forget about MNC, even if you look at larger organizations, be it the government organization or any of the Indian organizations also, 
in larger organization it becomes very difficult for implementing certain thing across the board primarily because we are predominantly driven by our departmental kpa mindset number 1 coming to mnc there is another challenge is primarily in an mnc what happens quite often is that when you have a ceo with a variable pay sitting at the top with 3 years of service time i don't expect him to take any decision which is long term so if that is a kind of a, an organization i'm going to have i can't have any great long term initiative taken here having said that let us not look beyond and see whether we can do it somebody else has to do it no why should i look at it like this within our own department i look at this like this there are three domains of control we have span of control sphere of influence beyond influence and control let us control what we can control first for example you are a function in your company you are actually performing your uh, uh, role as a functional expert you are actually having an internal customer why don't you empathize with the internal customer and start implementing it nobody is going to stop you right this is my answer for this one try out within what is your capability and your control inshallah that will be taken care of i hope i answered your question vignesh vignesh from pune right I think so yeah okay yeah vignesh is the pan india name you know i mean it's, yeah it's, yeah I, 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 i remember a guy vignesh from pune uh, he was my student okay we have the next question here pragya is asking how exactly to train our minds uh, to observe problems and to find solutions to those problems <laughs> think like a child be shameless in asking question see the reason till after 25 years in mumbai i am not able to learn marathi because i have been talking to people only in english or hindi ek bar male mait nahi bolega to i think everybody will take responsibility to teach me marathi i am afraid because what somebody else will think the point is that observation has to be you have to train for observation i fully understand what you see you have to train your mind that is possible only when you start taking interest in finding out you know uh, why this pattern is like this why are you having this kind of a structure something simple thing like you know this is a uh, what do you call uh, mic i am using why is it having a shape like this you start thinking about it it will give you so many answers why somebody should have a product like this you take this case itself take this one why somebody should have like this why not you have it something like uh, what it used to be earlier like this because people found it hey boss i want to even transfer data therefore i went for this so the question here is that most often like what i said sometime my necessity is a mother of invention you start observing look around what is happening be aware always it is very very important be aware the first a in empathy is aware only when we are aware we can think about articulating an action that is very crucial we have to essentially be aware always so that's the first part then uh, once you define the problem solution presents itself that's the way i look at it yeah okay, yes sir another question another question here is i i appreciate these examples only one question are these indian jugad or indian innovation and design thinking <laughs> that's why i said don't underestimate jugad some more there you know uh, certain words uh, uh, get a, a malafide uh, a connotation or demeaning connotation also jugad is slowly becoming a word like that definitely it is it, it, it talks about our ingenuity but having said that an ingenuity cannot be a one off solution let us be clear a solution has to be a sustainable solution sustainable i am not talking about sustainable only in the context of the sustainability of uh, triple bottom line people planet and all i am talking about a, a, a solution which is going to be scaled up a solution which is easy to implement that is where it crosses from jugad to innovation a temporary solution i is what what i am talking about let me explain what i mean by that for example you go to a shop floor you go to a shop floor suppose if the company is making let us say for example uh, polymer polymer fibers you will find invariably everywhere you go they will use the same polymer fiber to tie or tie things and they call it as a jugad that's not jugad that is compromising safety 
in the if you want to really qualify it let us graduate juga to sustainable innovation okay it is common sense ultimately it is common sense let us be very clear about it whatever i discuss is common sense but as a ceo can i call everybody in the company and say come on guys let us apply common sense and improve profit i need a vehicle and the vehicle depends upon what is the specific challenge i have to address for example if variability in my company is extremely high i will take six sigma as a tool if i want to be more customer centric if i am missing this i will take design thinking as a tool if hammer is the only tool i have i will look at every problem as a nail that's what maslow said i can't look at everything as a solution i got a solution therefore i will find a problem for this no let us not take design thinking like this let us not take anything like that it purely depends upon what is the challenge you are facing you come with the solution design thinking base is that i hope i answer the question thank you uh, mr haryanan one last question uh, before we conclude and asked by suresh nair is saying how can this concept i presume of design thinking be used to motivate and improve productivity in the hr context lovely lovely <laughs> okay see typically motivate and improve productivity from the hr context see ultimately let us understand one thing um, as an individual we always want to improve uh, i don't know how many participants we have how many participants we have sir uh, just now we have about 82 remaining there were about 137 at uh, 137 i am 100% sure all 137 will raise their hand we want to improve all of us have innate need innate wish to improve but what happens in organizational context is as soon as somebody enters the organization we start getting into what we are supposed to be calling as a routine we keep on doing the routine again and again and again one of the major job of anybody working in the organization has to be improvement including the people at the ground level to the top level so how do i motivate people to improve is ultimately an improvement mindset i the way we have to improve the people is a different context and different topic by itself called tea total employee involvement tei is what we talk about how do i m but i make one statement i will cover a little bit of this in war on waste next week how do i embed improvement in my day to day work how do i embed i miss the word embed how do i embed improvement in my day to day work how do i embed improvement in my daily routine the solution lies there for making the people productive okay so um ahmed has a curiosity asking war on waste what will this session be based on so if in a sense oh, okay war on waste is primarily anything that doesn't add value to customer is a waste so when you say it is a war a war has to have a strategy i can say again using the same in the perspective i use common sense and go and attack waste no that's not going to work so we will be classifying what a waste is how do i divide waste into categories what kind of tools and methodologies we can use to attack this waste and how do i make it sustainable that's what we are going to discuss thank you thank you professor haryanan for your wonderful session and equally wonderful uh, responses to the questions we uh, hope to see you again not hope to we certainly will see you again on the topic <laughs> of war on waste and uh, for everybody's benefit i'm going to show you a teaser that my team has made and and this has to do in the context of uh, what i will uh, stop sharing sir you yes. can move me yeah okay yes great. Great. can you see this video Yes, we do. Yes.
So each of these speakers are very outstanding and exceptional people in their own right. They are uh, exceptional in the domain, they are experts. All of them, Dr. Sujay Banerjee, Sanjay Mitra, and we have Prasad Khaipa right in the end, uh, who's, who's a professor at ISB and, and basically a mathematician, a physicist, and a philosopher. Uh, a pleasure to listen to him as well. So I invite everybody to all of the uh, webinars that we have uh, store, in store for you, uh, four to five every day, except Professor Prasad Khaipa's session will be at 9 a.m. in the morning because he's based out of Campbell in California. I thank you everybody and thank you Professor Haryaran uh, for this wonderful uh, hour that we spent. I wish you all the very best and um, do enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you and good night. Thank you.